What's up guys? How are you all doing? And welcome to another Maker Monday. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Hopefully you had a good weekend. My weekend was a little rainy this weekend. Huh, it rained a bunch and I slept a bunch, which was which was good because as you know, I was sick last Monday, so feeling a lot better now. <clears throat> so sorry about that. I wasn't able to release a video. In any case, this video is going to be since I I've been kind of sick and not really getting with it. This video is going to kind of be a little bit of just kind of what's going on, okay? What I've got planned for the channel and whatnot. So if you like that, great, stick with it. Um, if you'd rather go see something <clears throat> being put together or made or wherever, check out some of my other videos. Got that cool uh, brew probe video that I released as well as the Cortana stuff and all that jazz. But anyway, for the rest of us, we're going to be talking about what is going on right now as far as the channel goes. And we got some upcoming stuff I still need to give away one of these really cool DF robot uh, fire beetles. Um, I'll be giving one of those away, so definitely look for that video. Um, other things that's going on, got some 3D printing footage this weekend of 3D printing with the TiVo Little Monster, which is a gigantic uh, 3D printer. It's pretty darn awesome, so I'm compiling all that information and I'll be editing that up and getting that out to you all as well. Got some other things on the list. Got things like installing Android operating system onto the Raspberry Pi, so that ought to be pretty darn cool. I'm pretty excited about that, as well as, like I said, we're going to be checking out, I think I showed this to you before, but this is one of the objects, in case you guys missed it, that is printed on the TiVo uh, Little Monster printer. Uh, I had to tape the top back on because my son was playing with it and busted the top off, but no big deal. I'll probably just print another one. In any case, pretty darn awesome. Great big huge stuff that it can print. Um, I'm thinking about probably printing a windmill with it, like an actual wind turbine, and ordering a generator and all kinds of cool stuff for that. But the main project <clears throat> that we're going to be going on is going to be a home automation system. I'm going to go ahead and I've decided, I've been thinking about it for quite a while, and I decided I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to <clears throat> build a whole home automation system and show you guys how to put all of that together. Now what I've done is I've actually used two routers. I've actually used one router that's my main router that goes to the internet and provides my whole home with internet and Wi-Fi and blah 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 whiz bang and all that stuff. But then I have another router that sits off to the side of that one that has an unbroadcasted SSID, basically Wi-Fi system. And that Wi-Fi system is going to be for all the wireless sensors that are all over the house and wireless doodads and whatever it will be. Um, and that will be a secured network with MAC address filtering as well as firewall settings, access lists, and a whole host of security. <clears throat> and I figured what I would do is I would share that with you guys because I actually shared it with one of my coworkers that I was doing all this home automation stuff. And um, they asked me about cybersecurity. You know, what, 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 what would you do for cybersecurity? And I told them kind of what I would probably do. And I got to thinking to myself, I was like, that's, that's probably a, a good thing to, uh, to show you guys. You know, because uh, the job that I have actually deals heavily in all the cybersecurity stuff uh, that's been going on uh, in, in the nation and whatnot. We have to secure a lot of our stuff the, where I work and whatnot. So I've pretty well been baptized with all of the firewalls and rule sets and all that stuff. And IDS, IPS, and you name it, all the acronyms and everything so far as the cybersecurity stuff goes. And those of you who don't know, cybersecurity just means you know basically prevention for hackers you know people hacking into your stuff and to me I was thinking that would probably be a good thing to touch on uh, if we're gonna be looking at doing whole home automation I mean if you can unlock your home from remotely or you can uh, open your garage door and unlock your door so you can get in your house or whatever from anywhere in the world you know that's a little that seems a little dangerous to me you know I'm kinda like whoa you know what if someone hacks into your system and unlocks your house and everything and then they can just have free reign of your house and then leave you know that's that's kinda scary to me so anyway so I figured I would sit down and apply some of the stuff that I'm doing at a professional level at my work and whatnot and the other people that are doing it at my work um, apply that to a home system so that way you can secure your system and have all those cool benefits of, of being able to be anywhere in the world and turn your lights on and off or unlock your door if let's say you know you forget something and you need your neighbor to run by you can be like the house is unlocked go in the house is locked, you know, everybody's safe again or everything's going good, whatnot. Um, 
I think that would be kind of cool to be able to have that, but also have the security of knowing that even if people are trying to hack in, it's going to be next to impossible for them to get in to your system. And so I'll show you a whole barrage of things and ways to uh, help you uh, prevent that from happening, as well as showing some really cool stuff. Like I found that they have wall switches now that are Wi-Fi enabled. So you basically, you have lights in your living room, let's say, you just replace the wall switch. Now you have to be careful, you probably hire, hire an electrician for that, or if you are an electrician, then you can do it, but you probably ought to have you know professional help to do that, because anytime you're dealing with mains voltages, uh, it's, it's a little bit nerve wracking and could be potentially dangerous. If you will do it yourself, please study up on the codes in your area. Uh, as far as here in the United States, we have the National Electric Code. Please study up on that and make sure and turn it off. If you do decide that you're gonna do it, please turn it off. Turn off the breaker and uh, wire it where it's cold. There's no chance of injury. And then make sure and pick yourself up, you know, some sort of a how-to book or ask an electrician or something if you decide you're gonna do it yourself. Check up on the codes, they're there for your safety, okay? Anyway, besides that, what I want to talk about then next is some of the other things. I was thinking about building more kits and, and things. Would you guys like to have kits? You know, if maybe certain objects, like, I don't know, I was thinking about, you know, like, like, the, like the brew probe. You know, I mean, how many homebrewers are out there? Is anybody homebrewers? Um, maybe, maybe not necessarily this, but um, maybe when I start doing the home assistant, uh, or the home automation stuff that we're going to be doing. Maybe the different devices and stuff I, I, I make myself. Would you guys like that in kits? Like I could throw it out on, on Tindy and then you could just you know, buy the board or whatever, maybe just the circuit board or maybe a whole kitted thing where it's got components and everything. You just put it all together. I don't know. It's something I've been throwing around, been thinking about because it's going to be something I have to inventory and whatnot. But if you guys would like it, um, definitely let me know in the comments. I mean, I'll do it if there's enough people that are going to want to do that. But if, if it's only like one or two of you, uh, I'll probably hold off and I'll just do like I normally do and deliver the code and all the schematics and what I'm doing and all the bill of materials and everything. And you guys can just figure it out for there. But um, <clears throat> if it would help you to have it just where you just, you pay like, you know, 20 bucks or 30 bucks or whatever it is, and you get all the stuff, you just have to put it together and then it works. I can do that. That's fine. I can put that together for you. Um, but I'd like to, uh, you guys to let me know if that would be cool stuff um, that you would guys like to see. Speaking of which, things that you can buy, I do have one thing for sale, and that is the USB inspector. You know, I keep finding things to use this for. Definitely. I mean, awesomely. Like I had uh, this one system that I was testing out, which I may show you guys later. That was part of the home automation stuff. But it was a battery powered system, and it could be powered and charged off of a micro USB connection. And so, well, the battery wasn't charged and I didn't really want to pull out a micro USB charger. I mean, I got, I've got a few of them, but I really didn't want to mess with it. Um, and I didn't know how much current it took because it, it has a motor in it, this automation system. And so I didn't know how much power it really needed. So what I did, I took this guy, plugged it in. I have one of my, let's see, let me look over here. Let's see if I have it. I think I do. Yeah, I got one. I got one of these. Pick these up off of Amazon or Fleabay, whatever you want to call it. But it's basically a Type A to a micro USB. Do you plug this into this puppy? If I can plug it in, Shazam! You hook up your power supply, your benchtop power supply. You just hook that up to your positive and negative that's broke out here, and then voila, you have basically your benchtop power supply. Plug that into it, and that'll that'll provide up to at least mine's a three amp power supply, 50 volt three amp power supply. You know, you got all kinds of power through there. Click, you know, um, and especially on USB, uh, not everything has gone USB three uh, yet. So most everything operates on the USB two principle. So two amps is all you need, and that's a three amp power supply. So. Bob's your uncle. So check that out, you know. Uh, these things are great. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive. On Tindy, check out the link in the description, but check it out. Um, USB inspector, check me out on Tindy, go find me. Because these things are actually really helpful. Like I said, I keep, I keep finding uses for this. It's, it's just fantastic. I'm glad, that I, I'm glad that I made those because, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, it's nice to have, but you know, you never go make it, you never build it or have it, you know, but I'm telling you, having a slew of these things, because I have all the prototype ones, <laughs> but having a slew of these things just sitting around, 
it's fantastic. And we've sold uh, quite a few of them uh, uh, for off attendee. So definitely check that out. Thumb this video up, uh, share it around. Uh, uh, I think there's even links on, on attendee site, share the link on your social medias or whatever. Um, get the word out to people because it's just, it's one of those little trinkets. It helps the channel. I'm not going to lie. It helps the channel. All proceeds of that goes to the channel so we can keep bringing more, buying more sensors and more cool stuff to bring. But also it does help. I mean, it is a nice little trinket to have just laying around in your, in your lab and your, you know, on your desk because, uh, it just works real great. You can plug, uh, plug anything into it and you can inspect stuff too. Like there was, well, with the DF robot thing with this guy, um, I plugged in the, the charging port thing and plugged in my USB inspector so I could see how much current this draws. And then when I put it to sleep, I can see how much current it's drawing in sleep mode and everything. And I don't have to tear this apart and try to clip a meter around it or try to splice a meter in or something like that. No, I just, I have the little USB inspector and I just clip the stuff to it and it's all external and I can have this all sealed up and, and working just fine. So, so yeah, pick one of those up. I know that was a long plug for my, my deal that I'm making, but seriously, it does help. I made it really for you guys, made it, made, made it for me because I use these things all the time and, but I made it for you guys. So you guys picked it up. I tried to make it as cheap as possible. It's just a passive device. But yeah, pick one of those up. It's awesome. So anyway, other things. Um, I've been trying to fly my quad. Um, I think I'm going to do a video on the different 3D printed upgrades that I'm doing to this. Um, I think I may even 3D print a battery holder for this thing. But I may do that. Um, definitely. Oh, another thing to let me know in the comments is let me know if you would like to see more videos of me actually making the 3D printed uh, box. If that would be something interesting to you. Definitely let me know. I will uh, try to do that. It's just that can get kind of long. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it with the video on the Bluetooth dongle. I'm going to show you how to make your very own uh, Bluetooth dongle, meaning you'll be able to plug it in with a three and a half millimeter jack into anything that has like an auxiliary input. And then it'll basically turn whatever that device is, whether it be a radio, uh, your stereo in your car, anything that has an auxiliary three and a half millimeter input. Um, it'll basically, you can use that input to then turn it into a Bluetooth receiver for like your phone or your iPod or whatever, you know, to play music on. So that's going to be another video that's in the mix that is coming up pretty soon. I've already shot footage for it. So I just got to try to tie it all together. So anyway, guys, I think we're at our 12 minute mark. We are. So I hope that you guys have a wonderful week. Thanks for joining me on this Maker Monday. I'll try to keep other Mondays going. Uh, let God willing and the creek don't rise and I don't uh, get sick again, which hopefully my kids are done being sick and they won't give it to me. So anyway, guys, make sure and like, subscribe and share this video as well as check me out on all the other social medias. You find them down there in the bottom. Check out the t-shirts because I got new ones coming and all that jazz. Look at me on Instructables if you like those written ones which reminds me I need to write some more Instructables for the stuff we've already done. But still, check me out on that as well as Twitter and everything else. And guys, I will see you in the next video. We'll catch you next time.